Daniel Borshaw. Top officials say the White House is behind the terrorism of their population and new evidence from 9-11. Coming up. Whistleblowers leak U.S. talks with the head of Al-Qaeda. World Trade 7 is shown on Times Square. And the father of a Twin Towers victim tells us about being attacked by mainstream media. Decades of terror against their own population blamed on extremists has actually been funded and planned by the White House. Top-level officials in the government and the CIA confirmed. A campaign known as Gladio is called by former CIA head Bill Colby a, quote, major operation. In sworn testimony, one of the conspirators confessed, you have to attack civilians, the people, women, children, far removed from any political game so authorities can bring in a state of emergency. Dr. Daniel Ganser, author of NATO's Secret Armies, thanks very much indeed for coming on. So mainstream media don't report this, but it is now on the record and officially documented that decades of terror attacks against their own population are in fact organised by the CIA and the White House. Operation Northwoods, with evidence for, of Operation Gladio, we have the data now available. And then the people understand that this exists, um, but they still have a, a psychological moment w w where they have a hard time to believe that it still goes on because it's, it's, it's bad news, you know. It basically means that terrorism can be manipulated in, in, order, to, um, in order to move people around like, like sheep, really. And, and if you're told you're sheep and you're being moved by, by false flag terrorism, I mean, this is really something you don't want to hear. Yeah, we keep finding this term strategy of tension by the White House. What does it mean? Strategy of tension uh, actually means that you blow up a bomb and say uh, your enemy did it. What we do have is um, evidence that this strategy of tension goes on. It does, it's not over. Bigger than Watergate, the FBI's Dennis Sacker calls US shielding Al-Qaeda leaders up to 2001 and reports veterans today still ongoing. FBI whistleblower Sybil Edmonds has exposed the, quote, innumerable regular meetings between US representatives and bin Laden's deputy, now head of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, leading up to September 2001. July 2001, FBI agents closing in on the 9-11 plotters were thrown off the case and threatened with prosecution. Then, when officers arrested Mohammed Khalifa, directly linked to America's most wanted terrorist, Ramzi Youssef, the Secretary of State himself intervened, had Khalifa immediately deported to Saudi and released. People at the CIA were ripped, not even speaking in retrospect, but contemporaneous with what the intelligence community knew. Khalifa's deportation was unreal. Dr. Kevin Barrett is the author of Questioning the War on Terror. Great to speak to you. We actually have leaders admitting these terrorists are just tools. And that's what Al-Qaeda is. It's a cat's paw for Western intelligence agencies. And we heard this from the Arab world's leading political commentator, Mohammed Haikal, who told us immediately after 9-11 that this official story of 9-11 is ridiculous. He said when he was at the highest levels of government in Europe, he was the one who was in charge of essentially uh, infiltrating and virtually running so-called Al-Qaeda. He said Al-Qaeda is full of uh, people from Saudi intelligence, from uh, U.S. intelligence, Israeli intelligence, and of course Egyptian intelligence. Uh, it couldn't do anything on its own. British scholar Nafis Ahmad, who's one of the world's leading scholars of terrorism and one of the best, uh, talks about an incident that happened in Turkey. I believe this was a little bit before 9-11. A high level, a supposed senior Al Qaeda commander was arrested in Turkey. And the guards at the prison, who were devout Muslims, noticed that he wasn't praying. Uh, he was asking for pork. Uh, and they said, What, you know, I thought we thought you were a radical Muslim. And uh, he kind of laughed and, and said, uh, No, no, this is all just a, a strategy of tension. This 9 11, the world's top physicists, pilots, engineers join victims' families to sidestep the mainstream media wall of silence. Huge billboards on Times Square and across the states confront the fact most Americans don't know a third giant tower on 9 11 wasn't even hit by a plane, yet somehow collapsed in free fall. At 5.20 p.m., World Trade 7 suddenly, neatly and symmetrically 
just folded like a pancake. This is high school physics. A building cannot do free fall with 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system without it being blown up. The government version is that office fires made all 84 steel columns break at the same time. But there are other versions. John Cole's among thousands of leading independent experts with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Great to speak to you. So who did it? Who didn't do it? is the, the 19 hijackers that allegedly flew the plane. It is impossible. It is impossible to melt that steel by the office fires, the jet fuel, or the collapse itself. It's a physical impossibility. It cannot be replicated experimentally. It defies the laws of physics. If you set aside your politics, you set aside your beliefs and your religion, and you use the scientific method, World Trade Center 7 is basically a classic controlled demolition that where a building free falls and comes straight down into virtually its own uh, footprint. Uh, the only explanation that explains all the evidence, the nanothermite, the, uh, the iron microspheres, the high temperatures found out there, the free fall, the uniform, what I call the uniform acceleration of the towers, when those came down, there was no impact or jolt when it hit the undamaged section below. Because there was no jolt, something blew those towers out, allowing it to, to uniformly uh, accelerate downward. The only thing that makes any sense at all from a scientific uh, perspective is that those towers were blown up. John made a mockery of mainstream sites, Nat Geo and Pop Mechanics, who've desperately tried, for instance, to show 175 pounds of military nanothermite couldn't break the columns. John did it with just one pound. Can thermite of any type burn through steel beams? I guess it can. Renowned librarian and researcher Elizabeth Woodworth has come in to help form the Consensus 9-11 panel, confirming it uses best practice with the most rigorous peer review. Thanks so much for joining us. There's this remarkably high consensus among experts that the government version can't be right. We have some of the top experts in the field who've published in uh, peer-reviewed scientific journals. And yet, these scientific journals exist, like the Herod study, but they're never covered in the media. If people knew about the research, uh, they would find it compelling. Dr. Griffin has said that he'd, he's never heard of anybody who saw the evidence became converted to this point of view and then changed back. Yeah, the panel's made government already change its story and admit Skyscraper 7's freefall. That's right. Uh, David Chandler uh, is an extraordinary uh, model maker. Chandler is on the panel and he devised a model to prove that the top floors uh, fell with no resistance. There's only one way that that can happen, and that is that all the, the, the columns, there are 84 of these columns, that they were severed at the same moment. Dr. Graham McQueen accessed the New York Fire Department records from that day. Thanks very much for joining us. Never broadcast by mainstream media, but more than 100 witnesses have even reported the explosives bringing down the Twin Towers. Here was this roughly 10,000 pages of extremely rich eyewitness material. And I found that there were 118 people who clearly perceived explosions. You know, we have firefighters who are used to fighting high-rise fires, who are used to encountering, encountering smoke explosions and boilers. And yet they use words like bombs. You know, they don't identify with the things we would expect. Floor by floor, it's not a pop it out. It was like, it was if, if it had detonated. Yeah, yeah, detonated. They were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. Bob McIlvain has wanted answers why the post-mortem of his son Bobby found his fatal injuries in the South Tower consistent not with fireballs, but explosives. Yet mainstream host Rachel Maddow here recently sneered he's not only a conspiracy theorist for asking questions, but also attempted to connect him to violence and Al-Qaeda. All of these nefarious conspiracies about government plots to kill and conspire and lie about it and cover up the real truth. I mean, this stuff is as ridiculous as it has ever been, but it is as ridiculous as it is dangerous. Bobby's father joins us. Thank you very much for speaking with us. How do you feel first losing your son and now being portrayed as the bad guy? My son died. He, he was died from an explosion. I can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. If I was in a courtroom, a, a jury cannot not accept that as proof. So that's where we have our problem. And I say, well, this is an inside job. Well, my son died from an inside job from someone 
putting bombs, detonations. I would make her sit in this room and go through what I just went with you. And then I would say, now you tell me I'm a conspiracy theorist. Just shows you how awful our media is. I don't want to call her a the media she makes over a million dollars and they tell her what to say. One uh, newspaper reporter and is from the Philadelphia area was very upfront with me. She said, you know, Bob, she says, as a reporter, I am the problem because we will lose our jobs. If I take that, just that little bit you just said to the editor, he will crush it. So I'm, I'm telling you right now, I can't put your story out there. The media owners will not allow them. The press would not cover just that because it put a little doubt in people's minds. Yeah, who do you blame for all this? The people of the United States are just as much to blame because they just want to believe that we are good people. We are an exceptional country. But this is what governments do. You know, it's very Machiavellian. Now we have an endless war on terror. I know what these people in Iraq, I know what these people in Syria, I know what these people in Libya, Afghanistan are we're going through because they're all losing children. And that's what it's all about. Everybody's losing family members. It's pure hell. So that's it, Daniel. <laughs> Tomorrow, Congress votes to bomb Syria, the latest war of the post-9-11 era. The U.S. would now officially be Al-Qaeda's Air Force, notes former Congressman Kucinich. But America's had enough. Nine in ten oppose this invasion, the most unpopular in history. Regarding 9-11, a massive 84% now say the government's lying. We now have the precedents documented that governments prepared to commit supreme crimes against its population. Exactly what happened on 9-11 can be argued by both so-called conspiracy theorists and the authorities. What's beyond dispute is on the 11th of September, the world will join to mourn the almost 3,000 innocent people who lost their lives. This is The Truth Seeker. Yeah.